report. Glory is the tangible goodness of God. When it moves, whoa, it's awesome. And all of the glory of the universe is inside of God, and he is inside of you. Figure that one out. Right. <laughs> if we had even the teeniest, idiotiest bit of revelation of the glory of God that's within us, yeah. we would be non-functioning humans walking this planet. No kidding. We would be laughing and giggling and rolling around on the floor all the time. Yay! Let's do that. <laughs> That's what means to be a follower of Christ, to be a follower of Jesus. He took care of everything. Let, let me tell you. Here, let me share a couple anecdotes. Do you know that God is so holy that he can roll around in the dirt with you and not get dirty? <laughs> How about that? I bet you didn't hear that one in church. God is bigger than the universe. Big place. Right? Those mathematicians and astrologists and or is it astronomer? It's the other, it's the, the second one. The first one's weird. The second one's cool. So it's <laughs> Whoa. And it's getting bigger and it's growing. And all the universe, the Bible says, it fits in the palm of his hand. Wow. <laughs> Name a place in the universe God is not. There's no such place. The universe is within him. Heaven is within him. And he's in with us. And you know, in all of that universe, there's not even one molecule. No, one atom. No, one electron. No, one proton. No, one quark. That has selfish attached to it at all. Right. God is so huge and there is nothing selfish about his nature in any way, shape, or form. That's something that we inherited from consuming the knowledge of good and evil. And we put that in our image of God box. He's the opposite of selfishness. He is selflessness. You know how I know? Jesus! <laughs> Any image that you have of God that's not consistent with Jesus on the cross is the thing that he came to set you free from. Images that don't correspond to Jesus on the cross is the very thing he came to set you free from. So that in your brain, you can flush the deception, and step into the light, duh, as he is the light. And we are in him, and he is in us. There you go. There's the gospel. It's really that easy. Yeah, we can go to lunch. It's really that easy. The beauty of the gospel is it's all done. I don't know why we're still worked up about it. We don't all should be really, really happy people. <laughs> Jesus got it all done, and we're in him, and he's in us, and we're in God, and God is in us, and the whole Godhead is in us, and we're all in the glory place, and it's awesome. And it should be like that every day. Yeah, but what about my, yeah, look at that and go, mm, I didn't do it. I wanted to. I almost had a Holy Spirit hand moment, as Darla would say. You can just tell that circumstance to go, Whatever. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Speak to the hand. Because I am the glory. I am in the glory. I'm a glory sponge. Squeeze me harder and watch Jesus come out. <laughs> Whoa. That's the truth, right? The glory sponge. I told you I was going to be the most intoxicated preacher you've ever seen. <laughs> Although it's hard to top Mr. Crowder. All right. So <laughs> that guy's funny. He's like, 
his eyes are closed. It's awesome. Um, <laughs> that's a good place to be in. Let me tell you a testimony. Now let's pray. Father, thank you so much for what you're doing already because this is awesome. Glory is radiating in this room because we all have rivers of living water within us. We are calling for an outpouring today. An outpouring that everybody in here begins to exude the glory and the presence of God because you're in us. And we receive that. We receive that revelation. And we release it in the house in Jesus' yeah, name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, so testimony. I have this amazing daughter. Her name is Jessica. And she's awesome. And she's in, uh, and I don't care if you don't agree with that. It's your opinion. And it doesn't count. But uh, she's amazing. And she's in Croatia. And um, she's out on the street. And they're doing sort of street ministry. <clears throat> It's unclear to me because I've, I've Skyped for about all of 72 seconds, uh, which was all sort of intermittent and, and text. So I'm not sure the whole story, but I'll tell you as I understand it. She's walking down the street, and she sees a lady, and she's highlighted to her in the way that Jessica could describe it. I don't understand, but she says that this lady is highlighted to her, and she goes, well, why is she highlighted? And she felt like God said, give her your scarf. Um, Jessica has a favorite scarf, and she happened to be wearing it that day. And she's like, ah, favorite scarf. <laughs> okay. So she gives the lady the scarf. Through the interpreter, um, they exchange just a little bit of stories and stuff. And um, the lady finds out that Jessica and her group are having a meeting at this church the next day. And that's kind of the end of the conversation. Um, the next day at the meeting, this lady shows up. She walks in. She got the scarf on. And Jessica's like, you came. Yay. And she goes, yeah, I came because uh, I, I really need prayer. Prayer for what? Well, I, I have an ear that's bad. I, I mean, I have like 10% hearing in this ear. And it's been that way for a long time. I, I don't know if she's born with it or what. Don't know the details, but her, she doesn't hear very well at all. Hardly at, from one ear. And she goes, oh, well, let's pray for that. Jessica says, okay, let's pray for that. That'll be awesome. We'll see what happens. Yeah, come on. Why not? So she prays for it. Pop. They hear it. They hear the pop. All right, Jessica hears it. The lady hears it. Everybody hears the pop. And they're like, what? Now the lady's going, oh, it's so loud. It's so loud. She's freaking out, right? She's like, oh, my gosh. Now Jessica's freaking out. What just happened? Well, you know, brother, if you had the faith, then you could just pray for them and they would be healed and that's how it works. Well, good luck with that because that's not how it works. God inside of us. Yeah, yeah. So she's just agreeing. And this lady gets miraculously healed and they're all freaking out, which is exciting to me because that's the way I operate. I might look like I have confidence. I only have confidence in him. Right? right. right? So... Now she says, well, if God can fix that, I have this problem. And she sticks out her arm, and she has an upside-down elbow. It's a weird birth defect thing. I've heard of it a couple times now, but where the elbow's upside down. And Darla's in there. She'll explain it to you. So it, it doesn't, you know, it's opposite of what it, it's weird, right? It's weird and not, they're, they're weird, but you know what I mean. It's unusual. So Jessica says, wow, let's pray for that, too. So she prays for it. When they're praying, bam, it got fixed. It went whoop. And Jessica's looking at it, and she goes, oh, oh, oh that was nasty. <laughs> it actually made her have a gag reflex because it was so shocking. So she's telling me the story, and she's going, oh. And I'm like, oh, that's real. Come on. <laughs> Isn't that real? Oh. That is so real. I'm mean, like, yay. Wow. Croatia, man. After that, what should we talk about? I don't know. <laughs> Let's put a slide up. I want to give you some, uh, some revelation, you know, this whole idea of light and dark. Uh, again, because we consume the knowledge of good and evil and we're, we're infatuated, not anybody in this room. 
okay? So I'll discount you. I'll, I'll put you in the tree of life consumer category. Come on. Uh, but humans in general are so infatuated with the tree, the knowledge of good and evil, and the judger and all those kinds of things, that even things like light and dark, we've turned into good and evil. And that's because we're eating the wrong tree. We have the wrong filter. Jesus talks about light and dark, and he's actually talking about revelation and deception. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Light came into the darkness. It actually says that light came out of the darkness. God spoke light <coughs> out of the darkness. Whoa, he brings nice. revelation in deception, right? He brings revelation where you're clouded in your thinking. Imagine waking up from a coma one day. Wow, what's been going on? Suddenly you're going to have a whole lot of revelation of yeah. what's happened while you've been in the coma, right? So it's like waking up. It's like waking up, right? It says that sin separated us from God in our own selves and that, that we were blind and stumbling around. God was never hiding from us. We couldn't find him because we were blind. Boom. And the light comes. And who's the light? Jesus. Wow, that's not even what I'm going to talk about. Next slide. <laughs> but I do more than think. I ask and I ask God of our, the God of our master, Jesus Christ, the God of glory, to make you intelligent and discerning and knowing him personally. Your eyes focused and clear so that you can see exactly what it is he's calling you to do. Grasp the immensity of this glorious manifest goodness way of life he has for his followers. Oh, the utter extravagance of his work in us who trust him. Endless energy, boundless strength. You got a line there? <clears throat> Are you motivated? I'm pretty like motivated. That. <coughs> Before that's in, the Bible. <laughs> it's actually in the Bible. It's in the book. Next slide, please. It is finished. Dan Danny covered this, I think, well last week. At least I understood that. Yes. Does everybody know that their miserable mm -hmm. sin nature is dead? Yes. Yes. Do we need to talk about that anymore? No. Thank the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> what a waste of time. I, I can tell you that if we could find our rest and our peace, you would find that your default nature, your new creation in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. is joined to Jesus. Yay! <laughs> joined to the Trinity, joined to the Godhead. The Godhead is perfect in relationship, in love, and in peace. And that's who you are in them. Come on! It's not any more complicated than that. <laughs> if you could just stop and just take a breath and sit still for a second you'll discover that you're like Jesus right. on purpose. <laughs> Let's go some slides forward. I'll, I'll tell you. Let's go next slide. Next slide. The master plan. Ephesians 1, 4. Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. Who in here is holy and blameless? You better all raise your hands, or we're going to do it over again, what Danny did last week. You're all holy and blameless. Come on. Say, I'm perfect. I'm perfect. Thank, perfect. You. Thank you. He made you to be that. In love, he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of a will, to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the beloved. See, it's happening. People are getting whacked already. This is good news. This is good news. Blessed us in the beloved. This was the design. This was the plan. Oh, if we could just stop and take a moment and believe this. Believe it. It's already done. Whether you like it or not, he already saved you. Whether you like it or not, you're already in him. Whether you like it or not, whether you had permission or not, he took you into himself and he took you into the grave and he brought you back to life and you are a child of God whether you want to be or not. Right. I'm sorry. That's the way it works. And he had that plan before he even spoke light into the universe. That's right. right. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> That ought to make you go a little, ooh. <laughs> right? <laughs> Let's go to the next slide. Come 
on. Whitney's back there going, what is wrong with that guy? <laughs> All right, so Adam versus Jesus. The free gift is not like the trespass. All right, I'll read you the slide, but let me show you a picture. Two pictures. I'll show you two pictures. Two pictures. All right, the first one looks like this. Adam, one. One dude. One dude. Right? And then, he, and then the one dude became a dude and a dudette. Right? So <laughs> just, just see dude and dudette as one. So there's, there's one Adam. Adam messes up. He eats from the bad trees. And he gets all jacked up. Okay? I'm telling you. He got jacked up. One day, he's in love with God. The next day, he's hiding from the same God. He's jacked up. Right? God said he died, died. He died in his dying. He was dead while he was dying. It's bad. Okay? Adam. Every, 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 every human that came out of Adam, they inherited all of that. Knowledge beauty. Judge, judge, judge. Right? This big pyramid. Right? Starts with one. Two dead. Two deads. Billion, 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 billion. Yeah. Billion, billion, trillion. Then Jesus comes. Jesus is all of this. One Adam, one Jesus. Jesus is all of mankind. God <coughs> affixed himself to our very humanity. When he was born into this reality... God attached himself to our humanity in a mysterious way and in an inexplicable way, but a truth. Mm -hmm. He attached himself to all of that. Come on. Yeah. And he reconciled all the pyramid, all of that. Adam, <coughs> one dude, Jesus, all of humanity. Right. All of mankind. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Woo. God says, you ain't getting it right, but you know what? Doesn't surprise me. So here's what I'll do. I'll become all of mankind and do it for you. There you go. Then you'll be good to go. Yeah. You gotta like that, right? Yeah. yeah. Imagery number two. Imagery number two. You guys know the story of Abraham? There's a song. It just jumped in my head. I'm not going to sing it. All right. <laughs> Father Abraham. Father, all right. So, <laughs> was that Holy Spirit? I don't know. So, Father Abraham comes out of the land of Oz. <laughs> not really. I'm having a moment. So, he, he comes, he's in the desert, and uh, God shows up I'm like he did with now. Abraham, which was really cool. <laughs> I'm in the whack. And, the, and the Abraham, he goes, he goes, God, how about me? Anyway, they had this big dialogue, and God makes a bunch of promises, which are awesome. And then, of course, Abraham, being a human, God understood that Abraham would likely not believe God so much. So God says, I'll do something that will make him believe. I will go through a ceremony that mankind at the time um, had been doing. There was a popular ceremony. It was a covenantal ceremony. It was called the cutting. The cutting. So what they would do is they would take animals, right, and they would cut them in half, pretty gory, put them on either side, and then the two people would walk through the dead carcasses with all the blood and say, yes, we're in covenant. May it be done to me as it's done to these animals if I break covenant with you. It's pretty powerful. It's a very strong image. Okay, check this out. When he did it with Abraham, Abraham was asleep, and God did it for him. God walked between the animals, and Abraham was sleeping. God fulfilled both sides of the promise. Wow. Right? Yeah. All right. This is your image number two. Abraham was sleeping. God knows this about us. Abraham wakes up and says, I know what God did, but I didn't. I was sleeping. So God joins himself to humanity. So now when he walks through the covenant, it's him and us together as one. His name was Jesus. Right. Wow. 
So now there's no more excuse. I can't say, but, but I was asleep. Listen, you had no vote. Sorry. He sucked you into himself. <laughs> Come on. And he walked through the covenantal promise. And he went into the grave. God could have left right then. He could have said, yep, grave, done, Jesus, body, leave him in there, dirt bones. I'm out of here. Going back to the Trinity, it's going to be awesome. What did he do instead? He was raised from the dead, still inexplicably bound to us. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the? <laughs> right? That ought to make you go, Ugh. He chose to be raised from the dead, still joined to mankind. <laughs> <clears throat> that should really make you happy. Because even though you didn't give him permission, he did it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Okay, with all that, that's what these verses mean. But the free gift is not like the trespass, for if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. And the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin. Praise the Lord. Because if it was just one man, if it was tiny Jesus, tiny Jesus, perfect sacrifice, tiny Jesus, God slits his throat and kills him so it's all better. That's tiny Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is big Jesus. Yes. All of mankind. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, don't get me going. For the judgment following the one trespass for our condemnation, but the free gift, free gift, free, it's free, free. Some, some people are really upset to get something free. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> I want to pay. No, 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 no. No free gifts. All right, I'll take your free gift, and I'll give you something back. Yeah. Free gift following many trespasses brought justification. Next slide. Thank you. For if because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness <clears throat> in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to the justification of life for all men. Next slide, please. For just as by one man's disobedience, failing to hear, heedlessness, and carelessness, the many were constituted sinners. So by one man's obedience, the many will be constituted as righteous, made acceptable to God, brought into right standing with him. Yay. It's done. Yes. It is finished. Yes. Next slide, please. Uh -huh. All right. But just in case, I'll show you another one. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 5.14. For the love of Christ controls us because we have, been, have concluded this, that one has died for all. Can you say all? All. Therefore, all, all have died, and he died for all. all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Who's unincluded? Next slide, please. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. This is good. This is amazing. When you get this, it will set you free. I'm telling you. When you look at anyone, anyone, Hindu, Muslim, even the Mormons. <laughs> nothing. You guys, nothing. <laughs> I must have you mesmerized. Come on. Even Christians yeah. have been included. <laughs> and you no longer see them as flesh, but you see them as a, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. We're all a new creation. We were born again, which means born from above. I'm going to get to that slide. I'll wait. New creation. Every person you meet. New creation. Every person you meet, you're actually going up to and saying, Dude, brother, nice to meet you. Child of God, the fullness of God dwells within you. Come on. You got glory all over you, man. <laughs> you are a child of God. You have no idea. Have you heard this story before? Evangelism 101. Yeah. 
Isn't that awesome? Doesn't that set you free? Doesn't it take that weight off your shoulders that says, but I got to give them a good story so they'll say the prayer? Because if they don't say the prayer, uh... tell them how awful they are. <laughs> Next slide. <laughs> All of this is from God who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, reconciliation, say that word three times, that is in Christ God who is reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting us to the message of reconciliation. What's the message of reconciliation? You're a child of God. 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 Next slide. Everyone's in. He is our propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Yay! This is called good news. This is called good news. This is the gospel. Yeah. Right. Jesus did it all. <laughs> that should make you very, very happy. Next slide, please. <clears throat> our rebirth has already happened. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy. He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Since you have been born again, not a perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. This is a whole other sermon in itself. But from the foundations, before the foundations of the earth, we were in Christ. Right? right? That was our beginning, which is before the foundations of the earth. When Jesus attached himself to mankind, mm -hmm. he was birthed into our existence, born of water. He went into the ground. He came out of the tomb, born in spirit. We all have been born from above. You were actually a child of God before you were a child of your parents. Whoa. Right. <laughs> that ought to mess you up a little bit. Stretch the noggin you got. You were in Christ before there were people. Adam was in Jesus before Adam was in Adam. Right. You getting messed up yet? Next slide, please. Jesus answered him, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. That word again is like the worst word that could be used in this translation. It's the last one in the list. From above, from heaven, from the beginning, from our origin, from our source. That's what the word really means. From our source. We're born in Christ. You with? Yeah. Okay. Jesus said, you're absolutely right. Take it from me. Unless a person is born from above, it's not possible to see what I'm pointing to, God's kingdom. Next slide, please. Jesus says, you're not listening. Let me say it again. Unless a person submits to this original creation, the wind hovering over the water creation, the invisible moving the visible, a baptism into new life, it's not possible to enter God's kingdom when you look at a baby, it's just that, a body. You can look at and touch. But the person who takes shape within is formed by something you can't see and touch, the spirit. And becomes a living spirit. That's awesome. Right. That's awesome. I don't know if this revelation is sinking in, but it is so important to see this. This is the thing that sets you free. This is the gospel. Your work is done because his work is done. You find rest in him. You find this revelation of who you are in Christ Jesus. The very nature of God is inside of you. Your resting moment is his goodness. It's awesome. You get to live from that place. Your circumstance no longer defines you. God does, right. and God has, and he did it a long time ago. Wow. Yeah. That's powerful. 